Hi, my name is Chris Bailey and I'm a Blender YouTuber over at C Bailey Film and today I'm bringing you this tutorial with CG Cookie. We're going to be talking about rigid body dynamics. That's right, we're going to be breaking stuff. Let's get started. Now don't forget to check out cgcookie.com. There's a ton of amazing material there for you to learn and grow your Blender skills. You can start a free account today. Now this is gonna be a basic introduction to rigid body dynamics. How do you get things to behave with proper physics as they bounce around and knock into each other? It's gonna be a lot of fun and we'll end with a really big explosion. So stay tuned to the very last second. Let's jump into it. Okay, here we are inside of Blender. Now we're gonna start talking about rigid body dynamics with a simple demonstration. I'm going to come over here to the Physics Properties tab with my cube selected. And you can see we get a couple of options. We're going to go ahead and click Rigid Body to activate it. Now I'm going to create a plane that I want this cube to fall onto. So I'm going to hit Shift A and go Plane and scale it up. And I'm going to also, with this plane selected, come to the Physics Properties tab and click Rigid Body. Everything needs to be activated as a rigid body in order to behave in the simulation. Now, in order to get things to work, I need to make sure my cube is above my plane because uh, I want it to fall and hit the plane. Okay, so there's two modes that we have here. You can see we've got active and we've got passive. And right now I've got my cube set to active and that means that it's going to behave with gravity. It's going to be an active participant in the rigid body simulation. So it's going to move around. However, if we select the plane, let's switch it to passive. Now, passive means it's not going to be affected by gravity. It's not going to react to other objects but it's still a part of the simulation. So it is going to react to other objects in the sense that objects can react with it. So this cube can still fall and impact this plane, but the plane's not going to fall with gravity and it's not going to hit other things and bounce around. So that's basically two differences. So passive, it just sits still and lets uh, objects um, react to it. Whereas active means that it's an active part of the scene and it's reacting to other objects in the scene. Now, with those two things set, I can go ahead and hit play on my timeline and you'll see we have a simulation. That's not very exciting, but hey, things are working and that's always a positive thing, right? I'm gonna go back to the beginning of my timeline. I'm gonna rotate my cube and run it again. You can see the cube behaves properly as if it's a physical object in the scene. Now let's make this a little more complicated. Let's duplicate the cube and create a few of these guys. All right, so I've got a few cubes, different sizes. Let's see what happens. So you can see they all interact with each other just by turning on rigid body and having active. Now that's the beauty of rigid body uh, dynamics is that it really works out of the box quite well. Let's introduce something a little more complicated to our scene. I'm gonna delete these guys and I'm gonna go shift A and I'm gonna create a monkey and I'll grab it up. Also get rid of my light and my camera so they're out of the way. Now this Suzanne monkey has got um, a pretty irregular shape to it, right? So let's go ahead and turn on rigid body dynamics and let's hit play to run the simulation. Well, you can see she actually behaves quite well. Now there are different ways of calculating the collision process and what's going on. Right here we can see we've got convex hull. With convex hull, it's basically Blender's creating a simplified mesh and then shrink wrapping it around the object that you have. And whenever uh, something collides with that mesh, then it, it calculates the collision for it. So it's basically like it, it reduces the geometry. So if you have a lot of geometry on your object, then it's a way for it to calculate things faster. Now you've got some simpler options, like for example, box. Now you can see we get a box around uh, the monkey. And if I go back to the beginning, let's run the simulation with box. You can see it behaves as if it was calculating with just this box. So these different shapes allow for different types of results. And um, so basically they're there to simplify the calculation. So if you have a lot of objects, let's say, and maybe they're a bit complex, but you don't need it to calculate exactly for every vertex in your object. You just want it to calculate just the basic bounds of the object. Then one of these is gonna be a really good option. Now, if you also conversely wanna go super detailed and use every single vertex in your mesh, and it's, they're all important for the collision, then you can switch down to this one here, which is mesh. And that will actually take the literal mesh of your object. Now, when you switch to mesh, uh, you do have a couple of options. So like if I was to come in here and add in a subdivision surface, and maybe a, uh, let's see, a displacement. And I'll create a new texture and I'll jump to my texture tab and I'll just create a clouds texture and then go back up here and just turn it right up. So it's a really crazy 
crazy looking thing. Now, if I go back and run my simulation with mesh turned on, you can see that I've got mesh actually popping through the bottom of my plane. So it's not really calculating with these. It's actually just calculating with this base mesh. Because you can see if I run this, it doesn't cut through. So the issue is coming from these modifiers. Well, if I come back over to my physics tab, I have this option here called source. And if I switch this from deform to final and then run the sim, you can see it will actually calculate it with those um, modifiers in place. So this is the slowest process uh, to go through. So um, this setting is the slowest one to calculate because it has to consider so many things. So what do you want to do is find a nice balance. What's going to give you the right kind of realism and how can you step it back enough so that you can have a nice speedy simulation with a lot of things going on. Now there's a couple other of options if we open these up here. We can talk about these really quick. So we've got surface response. We've got friction and bounciness. If I was to turn bounciness right up, my surface, if I click on my surface, I've got 0.5 friction and zero bounciness on the surface. So if I crank it up on this one as well, I'll come back. I'll actually get rid of these modifiers just to simplify my, uh, my sim. I'll come back over here and switch this to deform. So now I'm going to take my surface and I'm going to turn my bounciness up. I will go to one. I'll go all the way up to three, make it really a really bouncy surface. You can see that Suzanne bounces off of it a bit, but we can get even more of a response if I make the object itself bouncy. So, so you can see I got a nice result here with a really funny bouncing Suzanne. And that's with Suzanne set at a bounciness of two, the friction of five, and the ground plane set to a bounciness of one with a friction of five. Now, sensitivity, we've got collision margin. This allows us to kind of build in an extra margin. So if I was to turn this on and crank it up, let's crank it up high, actually. You can see that if we run the simulation, Suzanne's going to be bouncing as if She's not quite hit the surface. Now, if we have lots of different objects we want to be colliding things with, but not every object colliding with every object, you can use collections to sort that out. So if I had a cube here, let's say, and I want the cube to sit here on my plane as a rigid body passive, uh, but I don't want Suzanne to bounce off of it. You know, at the moment, she's going to hit it and I'll just move it over actually. So at the moment, Suzanne's going to hit the box and kind of fall off. But let's say I don't want this box to actually behave that way. So, so now with this cube, what I can do is select it and I can just switch it over from this first slot to the second one. And now you can see Suzanne's on the first and so is the plane. If I run the sim, Suzanne's going to now ignore the box, even though it has rigid body in it. So now what I could do is I could create, let's say, a UV sphere, grab it up here. And I could set this to rigid body as well. And then I could say, actually, I'm going to hold down shift and click the second button. Now the sphere is in both of these collections. So now when it runs, the sphere is going to actually react to both the ground and the cube, whereas Suzanne's just going to react to the ground. So that's a really helpful way to kind of pinpoint exact um, collisions for different types of objects and have a bit more of a control of how everything's going to interact together. So now that I'm going to do rigid body stuff. Let's do something really fun with it. All right, so I'm going to take a ground plane here, just create a normal plane. I'm going to turn it on to rigid body. I'm going to make it passive. I'm going to go shift A, create a cube. I'm going to grab it up on the Z a little bit. I'll go into edit mode and grab the top face. And I'll just grab it up like that. There we go. So I've got myself a little building. Uh, very cool. Now I'm going to scale my cube right up. Okay, so it's really big. And I'll also make sure it's not intersecting my ground plane. I'll just bring it up. So it's just sitting right there. All right, now make this ground a bit bigger. We've got ourselves a tower. Now there's a great uh, add-on in Blender that you can turn on if you go to preferences and you just type in fracture into the search box and you can turn on object self fracture. I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to go F3 and type subdivide. And then I'm just going to turn this right up. So we've just subdivided this thing a whole lot. Um, I might even do it one more time. So I'll go F3 subdivide again. So now I've got a very subdivided mesh. Now I'll come out of edit mode. I'll hit F3 and I'll type fracture and hit enter. And just with the base settings here, I'll just click OK and fracture will run. And it starts to create this really cool shattered version of my object. Now I'll turn off my original cube. So all I've got now are all these guys. I'm going to select all of my cubes 
And I'm going to drag them into this collection here. And then I'll drag my main cube out of that collection. And then I'll hide it. So I've just got these guys. Now that they're in their own collection, I can right click on it and select those objects. We'll select all of them together. I'm going to select one of these guys. And I'm going to turn on rigid body. And I'll leave all these settings just as is. And then I'm going to go into right click and say select objects in the collection. That will select all the different objects. And then what I can do is shift select that final piece again, the one that I set my rigid body on. So it was the last one that's active. And now if I type F3, type in copy, and you can see this third option, object rigid body copy from active. If you click that, now it's going to copy over this rigid body system to all of these pieces. And now if I hit play, you can see we get a fantastic collapsing structure. Oh, how cool is that? Now, if we really wanted to have some fun, we could have shift A, create a UV sphere, grab it up, stick it right in the middle of our tower, right? Turn on rigid body, make it passive, and now watch what's going to happen. Boom! Now, if you take your sphere and you just come right over to your object properties, you go to visibility, and you can just hide it in the viewport and your render. Now, one thing you'll notice is that there's no cache button here like we usually have for uh, whenever you want to save a simulation. With rigid body, it's actually found in a different location. It's not actually in the physics tab here. You need to come right up here to the top to scene properties. And underneath that, you've got this rigid body world drop down. If you come over here, you can open up the cache or cache, depending on where you are in the world. And you come right down to the simulation starting in. This is where you can set how many frames you want to cache. And then you can click bake. And that will run through and bake the simulation. Now, this is a really stable way of viewing your uh, rigid body simulation is to bake it first, especially if you've got a lot of pieces. Uh, if you're just playing in the, t in the viewport, you're going to get unstable results sometimes, especially when you go to render. So if you start seeing weird results or things aren't making a lot of sense, I would come over and, and hit that cache button just to make sure that you've got it just right. Now, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. Please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave us a comment as well. Let us know what you'd like to see in future tutorials. Until then, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.